Do you feel another learning? Uh, I'd like uh, on the ammonia reaction studies uh, before ammonia is recognized as a fuel. So since in Japan, we have a very big project on the uh, uh, SIP, so-called SIP project, uh, Strategic Innovation Promotion Program. Uh, this uh, uh, successful project uh, changed the mind uh, ammonia is uh, uh, used as energy. So. Uh, we we can see the drastic change of the uh, uh, studies for the ammonia uh, validation uh, before and after this SIP project. And then uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some recent trend of the validation of the ammonia reaction model and the future prospect. So the, uh, as everyone knows that uh, ammonia combustion doesn't emit the CO2, and, but currently, our ammonia is mostly uh, uh, produced from the coal or uh, natural gas. So uh, in near future, uh, uh, carbon capture and storage uh, need to be combined. And far futures, uh, all of the hydrogen will be produced from the uh, renewable energy. Then we will synthesize our ammonia and storage and transport to, to the uh, uh, site of the uh, energy uh, use. And uh, uh, we can also use, uh, use uh, hydrogen from the uh, uh, ammonia uh, cracking, but uh, we can also use the ammonia as a direct uh, combustor, directly to uh, combustors. So since uh, ammonia is a uh, uh, a very good characteristic for the storage and transportation, and uh, all, many industry already know uh, how to use the ammonia, and uh, that's why the ammonia is uh, one of the promising candidates for their energy uh, carriers. So there are many uh, important uh, characteristic of their ammonia, but I just want to uh, emphasize the uh, uh, transportation cost of the carbon-free fuels uh, at this presentation. And uh, uh, for the uh, hydrogen produced from the renewable energy and the uh, ammonia produced from the renewable energy, uh, uh, compare, uh, these costs are compared in the this, uh, reported uh, in the IEA, IEA uh, report. And uh, if uh, when we uh, transfer the, these uh, mixtures using the pipelines uh, within the certain shorter uh, rings, uh, hydrogen is a better uh, cost eff efficiency. But once uh, we uh, need to uh, transport uh, carbon free fuel, these carbon free fuels uh, using the marine transportation for far distance, uh, liquefaction cost of the hydrogen takes a very big impact, and then cost estimation is inversed. And uh, this is uh, the also IEA report. Uh, uh, distribution of the uh, uh, renewable energy uh, hydrogen cost in the world. And uh, you can see now this, this conference is connected to the Asia Pacific uh, Conference and the Combustion. So we are in the, this, this Asia Pacific. And uh, you can see, you know, the many islands and many islands country in the Asia Pacific region, and uh, including also Japan. Many countries have a very disadvantage on the to, to produce a low cost uh, renewable hydrogen. But some countries like the Australia, uh, India, and Saudi Arabia is a very good for the uh, uh, low cost uh, uh, hydrogen production. So uh, this uh, uneven distribution of the low cost renewable energy based hydrogen is also a very important characteristic. Then. Marine transportation characteristic of the carbon free fuel is a very important. I think that this is a very important point for the ammonia combustion in, in the, uh, these uh, regions. So, uh, as I introduced before, uh, uh, Professor Kobayashi's group uh, collaborate with uh, uh, IST in the, uh, uh, this is a very famous result. Uh, they uh, successfully uh, demonstrates the uh, uh, power generation using the ammonia gas turbines. So uh, this this project was also done in the SIP project, and uh, they successfully produce uh, about 40 kilowatt uh, power generation using pure ammonia air gas turbine. So 
Uh, I think this is a, a very good uh, game changing. Uh, this is a game changing that people change their mind. Ammonia can be used as energy utilization. And uh, what, so, so the um, ammonia is a very low reactivity fuel. So everyone know that. So uh, what they do in the technical viewpoint, uh, heat regeneration and swirl burner is a very important point. But in the fundamentary, I think the, one of the most important point is the understanding and the modeling of the fundamental combustion characteristics of the ammonia. Then they extract the uh, technical information, what kind of the preheating temperature is necessary and what time residence time is necessary for the gas turbine combustor. So that's why uh, uh, combustion characteristics of the flame ignition emission are very important uh, to, to develop the, these kind of the new uh, combustors for new low carbon fuels. And then uh, ammonia itself is well used in the industry in many kinds of the uh, applications. Uh, and uh, for the combustion people, uh, ammonia is one of the important uh, uh, reducing agent to, uh, to reduce the NOx emissions. And the uh, reduction reaction of the NOx by ammonia has so many studies uh, before. And also uh, ammonia is one of the volatile of the coal combustion and uh, NOx, uh, important source of the NOx emission. So NOx formation reaction from ammonia has also many, many studies before. And uh, ma many ammonia reaction model has been already established before SIP program. But uh, one of the important point is uh, most of the ammonia reaction studies focusing on the emission, so-called the NOx emissions. Of course, I, I would like to show later and um, there are the several studies on the frame and the ignition studies, but compared to the so many uh, emission studies, uh, 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 frame and ignition studies are not so well conducted. And then, uh, and uh, I, sorry, uh, this is a very famous uh, review paper of the uh, Professor Miller and Bormont. And uh, this uh, review paper uh, is also well uh, characterized uh, uh, fundamental of the ammonia uh, uh, reactions for, for the NOx uh, reduction and NOx emissions. And then one of the Maybe have you given this one? Okay, okay, thank you. Then uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, very, uh, this is also very important review paper uh, written by the Professor uh, Grabor groups. Uh, this is also, I think, the key review uh, for the ammonia reactions and uh, they uh, extensively pointed out uh, uh, many uh, 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 point of the update uh, from the Mirabelman uh, results, so called the, these kind of the reactions. Then, uh, uh, but as I mentioned before, the, uh, we have to also focusing on the uh, ammonia ignition and flame characteristics. And uh, for the hydrocarbons, uh, we also need that, this kind of the uh, data. And this is a, one of the picture of how we are doing the uh, reaction model development. Uh, nowadays, uh, our initial computation can well reproduce our, our electron structure of the reaction process. And uh, uh, some of the key rate experiment can be validated of the, uh, these our initial computation method. And we can estimate the rate constant for, for each elemental reaction. But, uh, we also need the validation using the DS or, 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 or fundamental combustion experimental result. Uh, there are two kind. Roughly, we have a two kinds of the experimental apparatus, so-called the reactor experiment. Uh, data obtained in the this kind of the reactor experiment are compared with our uh, zero-dimensional transient computations. And another thing is a frame experiment and uh, data obtained in the, this experiment are compared with 1D steady computations. So uh, for the zero dimensional systems, uh, ignition delay time is one of the very important characteristics and the intermediate species and species. Recently, the laser diagnostic is well developed so species time history can be also obtained. 
And for the frame experiment, uh, laminar frame speed is a very important uh, uh, parameter uh, because of the eigenvalue of the system. And the uh, extinction limit and uh, some species, speciation profile using the samplings are also uh, very useful to, to validate uh, 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 models. And we are also doing the micro flow reactors in, in, in our groups. So the developed models need to be validated and analysis and uh, which reaction uh, rate constant need to be updated and more accurate of initial computation conducted and then doing the validation. This kind of the cycle is a very important. So we have to do also for the ammonia for, for this, this kind of the model development. But as I mentioned before, the uh, ammonia ignition studied before SIB projects has not been so, so many. Uh, I, this is, this is a, one, uh, one of the literature reviews for the ammonia ignition uh, data. So the, for, to, to my understanding, uh, uh, to, to, to my best of the knowledge, uh, Professor Takeyama and the Miyama is the first data of the ignition delay time with the ammonia in the 1965. And the Professor Bull also following the uh, extending the some temperature regions and uh, Dumond uh, further extended to the temperature range. But as you can see, the, in, in that time, the pressure is not well arranged. And the uh, major purpose of the, this experiment is uh, getting the overall uh, 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 rate constant on the, of the ignition delay time. So, so I, that means the slope of the, this uh, uh, ignition delay time. So uh, temperature range is also very limited in the high, higher temperature condition because they are using the shock tubes. And uh, I think that this is a, only one uh, uh, comparison between the, not the details, kind of the semi, semi uh, 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 detailed uh, models, uh, comparison between the experiment and the computation. So I think these are all of the uh, uh, ignition studies of the ammonia bef before SIP project. But uh, in, uh, 2015, uh, uh, Professor Massiro and Peterson in the Texas a and Universities uh, reported, uh, I think this is also very, very famous uh, ammonia ignition study. Uh, they uh, accurately, uh, co carefully conducted the ammonia ignition delay time measurement using the shock tubes. And uh, they introduced uh, two important factors for, for the uh, 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 ammonia ignition study. I think one thing is the passivation for the ammonia absorption on the stainless steel wall. So ammonia always absorbed on the stainless steel. And uh, before doing the uh, uh, experiment, uh, 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 ammonia absorption must be equilibrium on, on the surface. And uh, this uh, pre, pre uh, process of the passivation uh, is uh, very important to determine the initial uh, ammonia concentrations. And also OH chemiluminescence is uh, well used for the uh, uh, identification of the initial event. And uh, H and OH uh, chemistry is very useful for the, uh, we, we have already developed a uh, uh, well uh, used uh, OH chemiluminescence uh, in the hydrogen and oxygen chemistry. But uh, they also uh, uh, introduced the uh, important OH chemiluminescence uh, formation, not from the hydrogen oxygen reaction, from nitrogen chemistry. N2O plus H produces uh, excited OH. Without this uh, 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 chemistry, uh, uh, chemiluminescence, uh, they cannot reproduce uh, OH uh, chemiluminescence profile obtained by, by experiment. So by using the, this two point, they uh, well uh, organize our ignition delay time and successfully uh, 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 use a vari uh, 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 validation of the detailed ammonia uh, uh, models. And we are also doing the uh, several uh, microflow reactor experiment. And this is a, a, a Temp uh, species profile measurement in the uh, my uh, microflow reactor systems. 
And uh, certain regions, we observe the uh, uh, ammonia weak frames and the uh, uh, water vapor uh, produced here. But uh, many model, at, this is a bit old data, so I, uh, paper. So at, at least at that time, uh, most of the chemistry doesn't uh, reproduce uh, this kind of the reactivities. And uh, this is a ignition delay times uh, uh, plot, uh, the ignition delay time versus uh, temperature inverse. In the high temperature regions, uh, as I mentioned before, there are several ignition delay data. So uh, any uh, models are uh, uh, predicting the very similar uh, ignition delay time except the GRI3. But in the low to intermediate regions, uh, there is a so huge discrepancies uh, between the models. So uh, I, I also recognize the low to intermediate temperature uh, is a, one of the important for the further validation of the ammonias. And then uh, at, that, at least at that time, uh, we, we thought the important uh, missing reactions related to the N2H4 and N2H3 and N2H2. These are very important in the low to intermediate temperatures. But at that time, Kondorf model, only Kondorf model includes that these reactions. And uh, kinetic studies of the, these uh, reactions has not been so many, may, may, made by, may, in the, so many. So many, most of the reaction has a very large uncertainties. And the uh, most important point, uh, uh, largest uncertainty could be the recombination. This is a very sensitive to global reactivity in the low to intermediate temperature, but still we have uh, some difficulty to estimate the uh, accurate rate constant of the, this uh, uh, reaction. So this is a, a, a one of the a simple uh, demonstration how these recombination reactions are important in the low to intermediate temperature. Uh, solid line is the ignition delay times using the, um, I, this is a methane case, methane air mixture using the Aramcomec 2.0. And uh, dashed line is uh, just simply removing the C2 chemistry, over the C2 chemistry and extract only C1 chemistry. And you can see the, these two chemistry will reproduce the ignition delay time at the high temperature, but it's getting the so huge discrepancy in the low to intermediate temperature. So even for the hydrocarbons, this kind of the uh, radical recombination reactions they are very important and still difficult. There is still difficult. So it's similar to ammonia. Uh, uh, NH2 recombination reaction is a very uh, important uh, in the uh, reactivity in low to intermediate temperatures. And I made uh, some, some uh, uh, literature survey to mostly in, in, in including the D's chemistry. Uh, so uh, uh, in the uh, uh, NOx uh, chemistry, uh, ammonia is going to the NH2 and uh, NH2 going to the HNO, NO. This kind and NO could be uh, 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 reducing in the N2. This kind of the reaction has been well developed before, but for the low to intermediate temperature reactivity, this pathway uh, recombination over some, some small amount of the, sorry, uh, N2H2. And these uh, N2H4, N2H3, N2H2 two pathways are very sensitive to the uh, reactivity at low to intermediate temperature. So I think this is one of the uh, first ammonia model focusing on the low to intermediate temperature reactivities and by including the, these uh, chemistries. And also uh, I, I mainly focusing on the, these kind of the uh, uh, new pathways for the ammonia reaction, but still NOx reaction are uh, sometimes very important on the reactivity of the ammonia. So nowadays, many uh, research of the core combustion like the ammonia hydrogen, ammonia hydro methane, ammonia hydrocarbon, this kind of the core combustion uh, has been reported in, in by the many studies. And uh, most of the studies show the 
uh, reactivity simply decreases with the increasing of the ammonia fraction because ammonia is a very low reactivity. But at a certain specific point, ammonia plays a role of the reactivity promoters. So this is one of the examples. Uh, one, this is uh, obtained by the uh, CNRS groups. And uh, here's uh, methane ammonia combustion data. And here, without ammonia, so pure methane combustion. So at a intermediate temperature with small amount of the ammonia fractions showing the promotion of the uh, enhancement of the reactivities. So my uh, reactor experiment also showed that this kind of the uh, profiles. So uh, uh, in the pure, this is a DME uh, ammonia mixtures, uh, pure DME cases, we have a uh, reaction zone here. Small amount of the ammonia addition shift to the, uh, and the reaction zone shift to the lower temperature region. And then with the increase of the ammonia fraction, that simply decreases the reactivity because they, they need uh, this, to, to form the, this reaction zone, they need a higher temperature condition, higher temperature. So the chemiluminescence zone is a shifting to the, this kind of the non-monotonic uh, uh, profiles. So uh, based on the some analysis, uh, chemical analysis, NO and NO2 catalytic groups, uh, this is uh, so, uh, uh, very important. So NO plus HNO gives the OH radical and uh, NO, NO2 turns to the NO, uh, NO again through the diesel reaction. And this reaction also showing the OH radical. So uh, this kind of the uh, NO, NO2 uh, loop reaction producing the active OH radical. Uh, in, so ammonia is well known that there are very low reactivity mixture, uh, fewer, but in certain uh, conditions, NOx reactions promoting uh, overall reactivity of ammonia. And this is a, a frame studies uh, before SIP project. And uh, major purpose on the, these uh, studies are fire safety. So uh, how low burning velocity shown uh, in, in the ammonia, this, this is one of the uh, uh, purpose of the uh, studies. Uh, uh, Professor Zamashkov groups show, I think this is a, one of the uh, uh, oldest uh, uh, frame uh, data uh, covering the uh, wide range of the equivalence ratio, and uh, it's in the 1978. And uh, Roni, uh, Professor Roni, uh, also uh, conducted the uh, ammonia uh, uh, frame speed measurement using the uh, mi microgravity environment. And uh, another data can be also seen the uh, this, uh, of this data was obtained by the vertical tubes and this was using the constant volume chamber. So uh, several uh, ammonia frame data, frame speed data has been uh, reported before the SIP project. And, uh, but the data is mostly at the standard condition, at one atmospheric pressure and uh, uh, normal temperature. And uh, this is due to the these uh, data are slightly old ones. So recent laminar frame theory, for example, the effect of the storage rate or uh, radiation was not uh, adopted in the, this uh, uh, study. So uh, I can't see the, any uh, validation with the reaction model using the, in, in this uh, uh, studies. But uh, Professor Hayakawa's groups with the Professor uh, Kobayashi group uh, successfully uh, obtained uh, uh, a wide range of the frame speed of the ammonia over high elevated pressure and elevated temperature conditions. And uh, they can uh, also, they also made the uh, comparison between the uh, major frame speed with uh, uh, model predictions and access to the pressure dependence uh, in the, and, uh, in the, these kind of the, using the, these kind of the data. And another uh, uh, great uh, studies uh, from the, their groups is also the emission studies uh, 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 from the frames. So the 
Uh, ammonia is, a, as I mentioned, ammonia is a very important source of the ammonia. Uh, sorry, uh, NOx and NOx uh, ammonia is also used for the NOx uh, reaction. So NOx emission has been measured in the many kinds of the reactors, but this is, a, I think, the first data from the NOx emission from frames. So they stabilized the uh, uh, ammonia at the stagnation plane uh, with a heated temperature. And then uh, gas are sampling, sampled at uh, this stagnation uh, plate. And uh, this system is well characterized using the stretched frame code, so-called the Kemkin OPD or something like that. Then they successfully validate the uh, 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 emission characteristic from frames. Uh, between the experiment measured data and computational data. And this, one of the important data in this things is a no N2 emissions. So many people some uh, caring about uh, N2 emission from their ammonia because N2 has a very large uh, uh, green, greenhouse gas uh, characteristics. But uh, of course that can be produced when the frame temperature is low, but if, we may make a, a good uh, complete combustion of the ammonia, there is no N2 emission because N2 can be decomposed at the high temperatures. So uh, experimentally shown that this fact is also very uh, important for the ammonia uh, field, I think. This one. Okay, then uh, after the SIP project, uh, uh, we are also looking at the many uh, ammonia data, fundamental data. But nowadays, we have uh, so many publications of the ammonia. So I took the, this data in the Scopus on the 2000 uh, February. And uh, 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 ammonia with uh, combustion journal titles are, are plotted in, in these uh, figures. So you can see the long time ago, we have a several publication per year. Uh, I, as I mentioned before, these publications are mostly for the NOx emission and NOx reduction studies. But once recognized, uh, here is the SIP terms of the SIP project, and then people recognize the uh, ammonia can be used as a fuel then so many publication is increasing. So I, I try to keep the following the, all of the data, but sorry for if I miss in, in this presentation, but anyway, the, so many presentation uh, is now coming. And this is a quickly reviewing the some ammonia validation data in recent years. So this is a reactor experiment, several jet steered reactor, flow reactor, rapid compression machine, these are very important, uh, sorry, uh, these jet cell reactor and flow reactor are very useful for the speciation data. And RCM is uh, good for the ignition delay time data. And uh, these are uh, frame data. So uh, spherically propagating frames are well used and uh, burner stabilized frame is also uh, used. So many people are focusing on the uh, frame speed SL measurement for, for various so many conditions and frame data is continue. And uh, 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 some of the uh, ammonia uh, combustion with singers or uh, uh, other hydrocarbon has been also presented. And uh, another uh, a, a different, uh, different uh, uh, combustion characteristic from the uh, laminar frame speed are also uh, I reported some chemiluminescence data, speciation data in the uh, stagnation uh, frame, as I introduced in, in before. And the counter flow frame uh, extinction limit has been also uh, reported. So I just simply plotting the so many validation data. And this is just wow, some of them, but now we are getting the so many validation data. And uh, as I mentioned before, the now ammonia, uh, sorry, uh, the data type is a 
amount of the data type is uh, is a uh, for, for for in the viewpoint of the amount of the data data laminar speed uh, laminar frame speed are much much uh, so many laminar frame speed data have been obtained and next it could be ignition data and the speciation data are still a small amount and uh, frame data except the laminar frame speed are very limited like the chemiluminescence extinction the emission data and uh, uh, now, nowadays, a radical quantification uh, has been established for the main, uh, for the many hydrocarbon, um, but uh, not so well uh, adopted in for the ammonia uh, combustion. So, uh, I, I personally, uh, uh, radical quantification is highly uh, required for, for further uh, validations. And uh, for the fuel conditions, uh, coal combustion with hydrogen and hydrocarbon are so many yeah, are measured. And the pure ammonia combustion is still still limited, and uh, in, for the hydrocarbons, some people also consider the uh, use of the renewable based hydrocarbons such as uh, e fuel or biofuel that could be also a benefit to the uh, low carbon uh, fuels. And the pressure and temperature and concentration condition uh, are still some challenging for frames. Engine relevant high pressure and te high temperature conditions are highly uh, required, but obtaining the, these data is, uh, of course, I, very difficult. And uh, for the ignition experiment, uh, long ignition daytime conditions such as a low to intermediate temperature or low to intermediate pressure condition is uh, very ch still challenging. And also low dilution conditions, uh, also I think it's a challenge. For the speciations, uh, we have still lack of the high pressure condition and low dilution condition. So we have so many conditions and challenges. So uh, it should be going to the concrete. So the, uh, so I, I should skip this one. So. Uh, so many figures. So the, uh, I, finally, I would like to sim uh, simply uh, introduce uh, some uh, 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 challenging point, but is still unknown for the future ammonia reaction model. So the N2H2X reaction, especially for the H2 recombination reaction is a still, still very difficult point. And uh, uh, Astoran groups uh, already uh, presented the uh, uh, reaction pathways using the initial computation, but uh, this is a, uh, we, we recognize that this is a very complicated uh, chemical reaction. So chemically activated to reaction with multiple well isomers, singlet triple crossing. So this is a uh, quite difficult for estimating the rate constant. So for example, the, this recombination reaction has huge different uh, among the models. And uh, Professor Graborg's uh, review paper also pointed out the uh, water vapor effect on the oxidation and NOx emissions. In the water vapors uh, additions, experiments show no effect on the water vapor, but computation so shows uh, some effect of the uh, water vapor. So uh, we, are, we are still uh, uh, wondering the, what is the key of the dis discrepancy between the experiment and the modeling. And uh, so, uh, uh, Sabina, Professor Sabina's groups uh, also present, uh, uh, ana makes analysis for the uh, uh, source of the OH radicals. And we are also doing the, some uh, focusing on the H radical source in the N2H chemistry. And one of the, my students uh, will make the presentation on the H2 effect on the H2 production in the fuel rich condition in the ASPAC meeting. And the radiation uh, frame temperature effect on the frame data is also a very difficult point for the ammonia. So uh, radiation has a significant impact on the laminar frame speed, but right now we have no method to accurately estimate the uh, uh, frame temperature after the radiation heat loss. And uh, this radiation heat loss, uh, not only for the uh, frame speed, but also the emission characteristics uh, are, are, could be also changed. And uh, this is uh, one of the example of the device dependent validation data. So we have uh, so many difficult difficulty in the ammonia experiment. Like the, uh, one, one thing as I introduced, uh, ammonia has uh, absorption and uh, radiations, and uh, due to the 
slow frame velocity uh, buoyancy effect or something like that. And uh, this is a very famous uh, Mesen air laminar frame speed data over the years. Nowadays, uh, in, in the this ages, uh, we have a uh, difficulty on the estimating the storage rate effect. But nowadays, uh, we can estimate the very accurate uh, laminar frame speed within uh, plus minus 5% uh, uh, in, in for the Mesen year. And uh, I also plotted the some uh, uh, maximum uh, ammonia air mixture frame speed uh, in this figure. If I say 7 plus 7 centimeters per second, and here is a PRMI 10%, we have a still discrepancy uh, in, in the model. So further improvement to experiment could be also very important. And many, many, so many interesting topics for the chemistry. So sorry for the over the time. So anyway, summary is uh, here. Uh, experimental report on the validation of the ammonia reaction model has been introduced. And uh, initially, uh, most of the study focusing on the NOx reduction and NOx formation. But after the SIP project, extensive studies on the ignition and frame data has been obtained. But still, we have uh, so many problems to be solved, challenging and missing conditions. So I think this is a good source for the collaboration. And not only for the chemistry, but also the physical process like the radiation, wall chemical interaction, buoyancy need to be also considered in future. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So we have a lot of challenges to, to do. So, the, so now uh, this session is open for the uh, for us. So that there is any question or discussion? Yes, please. Thank you very much. That's a very, very nice overview of ammonia chemistry. I like your second last slide. If you could just go back a couple of slides back. Maybe, yeah, here where it shows the historical evolution of um, methane chemistry and the, how we progressing, the, your community is pro progressing towards uh, that same target, I guess, in a few years' time. Um, so is that going to be maybe another GRI-like mechanism for ammonia chemistry that the community can use? My question is, I guess, how long do you think it's going to take to reach the equivalent GRI? And then in the meantime, what do people who want to use chemistry for maybe turbulent flame calculations, what do they use? And maybe my third question, since I have it, is what happens when you co-firing with uh, hydrocarbons, what do you do with soot chemistry? Okay, so the first question could be very difficult for us, but uh, uh, since uh, radiation, uh, for, for my Opinion: The radiation and the buoyancy effect is uh, somehow the still still remain in these things. So uh, maybe there are uh, microgravity uh, experiment at the preheated temperature condition could be the good for the uh, standard, but it's not for standard for the, uh, for facility. <laughs> so. Uh, actually, I have no, no idea. So we have to, community need to be, uh, continue to discuss how to improve the experimental data. And it takes a long time, I think. And uh, actually, I, I, I want to ask to you, so how, how, how should, should go improve to, to these things? And the uh, last question for that, uh, yes, uh, for the hydrocarbons, uh, we have to, so many combination of the parameter space hydrogen, methanol, ethanol, DME, heptane, diesel, or something like that. So uh, we, we have to do so many parameter space. So uh, community also need to effort, to put the effort for, for, for the uh, uh, further, further uh, obtaining the further data. But uh, uh, I think the, uh, Starting from the small small hydrocarbon could be effective because due to the hierarchy structure of the chemistry, uh, higher hydrocarbon with ammonia always under the effect of the small hydrocarbon plus ammonia. Is that answer for you? <laughs> sorry, sorry for the discussion.
if they can or next other comments or questions. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. That's quite insightful. My name is Okafo from Kyushu University. Um, as, as you mentioned, there's a lot of work going on on validation of our, our, our ammonia reaction mechanisms and also optimization. And I would like you to uh, may, or like, uh, talk, make a comment on some acceptable practices when it comes to uh, rate constant updates. Because recently there seem to be some practices of uh, people, uh, some researchers trying to mechanically perturb the rate constant when you're trying to update the rate, rate constant. I know uh, from your presentation, you mentioned um, uh, ab initio cal calculations as one of the ways of uh, uh, get a rate constants or through uh, experiment. Although also you can pick rate constant from already published data, right? So, but I see sometimes you see uh, um, this practice of trying to mechanically vary these rate constants to fit experimental data. Please go, I would like to hear your opinion on that uh, practice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so there are, uh, essentially we have to, uh, uh, in the, I think that uh, even for the hydrocarbon chemistries, uh, community try to finding the which chemistry still has a, a, a large uncertainty. And focusing on the, for the chemistry, we having the large uncertainty, uh, try to improve the estimation. And that is, uh, I think, the uh, base way. So do not touch for the uh, uh, chemi uh, reactions uh, with small uncertainty. So we always focusing on the uh, uh, chemistry uh, reactions having the large uncertainty. And uh, I think the one of the fi fi almost final uh, question for, for the uh, uh, reaction with a large uncertainty that this, this reaction pathway. So uh, once we improve the, uh, this chemistry, we can go to the more better uh, uh, models for, for gas phase ammonia combustion. Of course, we can do the, some optimization. This is a very important thing. But we, we, we can also choose a two strategy. Yeah. For these reactions with large uncertainties, is it okay to just vary the rate constants by yourself? Just perturb them to fit experimental data? That's what, that's what I'm asking. Uh, it's difficult to say because pure chemistry people doesn't allow that method. <laughs> but for the combustion engineering people, we, we need the chemistry, so we, we need the model, so we that is uh, acceptable for the practical combustion. So we have to com communicate each other. <laughs> I, so I, I, ah, sorry, the, I found the, the comment in chat. I will check. Christine? Is it Q&A? Q&A. Yes. Oh, Christine? Hello. Okay, Christine, I can hear you. Wait. One minute, it will be okay. Hello, nice to see you. Hi, uh, see you. Thank you so much for this very great uh, presentation. I appreciate really a lot. I have only one question or one comment. You mentioned that, in fact, N2O is not a uh, uh, drawback for ammonia combustion, uh, except if uh, ammonia is not totally burned, sure. But uh, you show uh, some results with some N2O value around 30 ppm, something like that, 20 ppm. And in fact, it's not nothing, even if for us, usually this kind of uh, quantity is very low. If we consider the global, global warming effect, it will be very important, in fact, even 20 ppm. So the, the difficulty also is to, to try to measure this very low quantity of N2O and to have a right idea of the value of N2O emissions. Yeah, so the uh, first thing, uh, the N2O is a very, very small, less than 10 ppm in this uh, yes. uh, bit. But, but uh, the, as the, you mentioned, the equivalence yeah. ratio range is very small also. Yeah, because in so fact, if, if, yeah, if this go to the more linear condition, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, coming up. So the yeah, 
for for uh, uh, for the such a condition, of course, uh, we we need to the uh, 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 validation. Uh, I agree mm -hmm. that. And uh, what just I want to say here is uh, some uh, how do I say Com uh, non combustion people who don't like to ammonia. <laughs> Sometimes criticize the N2O is a critical issue for the ammonia combustion. It's true. <laughs> yeah. To, 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 to convince that this is a very good data. I, that, that's why I have to say here. <laughs> yes, but it's true, it's true, because in fact, before that, no, nobody uh, take care about N2O. Now they focus only about N2O. It's true. Yeah. Yes, uh, I agree. So for, for further validation for N2O to, to yes. is a very important, yeah. Yes. And so I have a, com a comment about the niche and delay. I totally agree with you. There is uh, only several data about niche and delay, and uh, especially intermediate temperature. This can be done also with a rapid compression machine, and uh, it is very difficult, in fact, with ammonia yeah. combustion yeah. to have a really rigorous uh, measurement of ID. It's it's, it's challenging. It's still challenging, in fact. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Thank you so much. It was very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, this is Thank you very much. That's a really nice overview. There's a lot of um, useful data in here that uh, all of us can benefit from. I want to go back to um, Professor Masri's question uh, of those who are working on uh, uh, turbine flames. Um, a little bit uh, uh, anxious that uh, what should we use, especially that uh, we you know, don't want to um, you, you know, use a thousand reaction type mechanisms and uh, we want to try and use a reduced mechanism. As such. So uh, what I'm interested in is he's saying that um, uh, plus or minus 10 percent in flame speeds and so on so how safe it is to use reduced mechanisms for nh3 and uh, what impact also on uh, addition of hydrogen in particular which seems to be sort of the common thing to do uh, when when you're burning ammonia especially at atmospheric conditions yeah so the uh, let me confirm your question, Dara. Uh, Dara uh, uh, frame speed of the ammonia with hydrogen. Uh, uh, I think that once uh, uh, hydrogen is introduced in the mixtures, uh, frame speed itself is going up. And uh, I think the frame speed higher than 20 centimeter per second uh, is much, much less uh, device dependence effect because buoyancy effect can be minimized and the radiation effect can be also minimized. So the problem is only for the data, data close to the very slow uh, laminar frame too, like the 10 centimeter per second to maybe 15 centimeter per second, something like that. Yeah, I think these are still challenging, I think. But higher frame speed condition, uh, existing studies are well reproduced uh, laminar frame speed. I I, agree. I, I I believe that. And the performance of reduced mechanisms? Mm, but the reduced mechanisms always need to compare with the detailed uh, chemical uh, reaction mechanism. So uh, you can also check the comparison between the uh, reduced one and the detailed one, I think. Okay, maybe it's close to the time. So that maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So the pyrolysis state. Yeah. So uh, thank you for the question. And uh, uh, I think the, it's very small figure. Sorry. Uh, I also put the uh, very state of art uh, pyrolysis shock tube data uh, in somewhere, I think. Uh, uh, here. Yeah. Uh, this is also the uh, shock tube data obtained by the uh, 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 Professor Peterson's group in the Texas and the University. They measure the uh, ammonia uh, time history uh, uh, in the uh, ammonia pyrolysis condition at the high temperatures. I think this kind of the data is still important, but uh, 
data point at a different condition is a very spare, like the low temperature condition or uh, different diluent condition, something like that. So we, I, I, I need uh, this kind of the data for further validation. Uh, thanks for the excellent uh, uh, review. Uh, so you mentioned laminar, uh, laminar flame speed, it's more or less you can get it, okay? With the different mechanism, now they are somewhat in agreement unless you're pushing into this very uh, low flame speed regime. But uh, running different mechanisms, I still see a wide variability when in predicting NO, NQO, NO2, and at the end, those are some of the critical uh, quantities we want to be able to predict with the CFD simulation. In, uh, first of all, do you agree with this, my view, that may be very limited in a sense compared to uh, your experience? And uh, also, what do we need as a, an experimentalist? Okay, well, you, you, play, you put a lot of uh, these uh, uh, challenges, but in terms of priority for this community, what should we tackle first? In your opinion, okay. Yeah, so the, uh, I think the NOx uh, measurement of data from frames is very important. And uh, as I mentioned before, the NOx data for the reactor experiment and the several uh, shock tube time, uh, as for example, the uh, NO, this is also NO time history in the shock tubes, high temperature condition, these can be, uh, these data can be available. But uh, in the practical application, we are always using the frames. NOx emission from frame data is very important. That's my opinion. Okay, any question or comments? So, okay. Hi there. So I really appreciated the talk. Uh, following on from some of the previous comments, and more viewing into the future. Some of us, particularly in the turbulent combustion uh, community, we're just after a very simple but unbelievably difficult question, which mechanism, right? <laughs> now, it's a very uh, I say, uncomfortable one. If you were to back a winner right now for, if you say, I've got an industry uh, colleague, they're looking to model an ammonia gas turbine combustor, they call you up, I'm after your expert opinion, <laughs> right? Um, we don't care about the number of species. We're not interested in speed, but we want to understand the combustor dynamics. And I realize it's an exceptionally difficult question because if you would um, say, let's say it's a methane flame, well, what is the criteria? Are you interested in pollutants? Are you interested in flame stabilization? But we have to choose something. You have to give them some recommendation. It's, a, it's an overall expert opinion. Can we come to any conclusion at the moment about what's publicly available? If you were to give some recommendation, it might be good for some things, not good for other. Maybe you can even back two, <laughs> maybe even a trifecta. Yeah, yeah, difficult question. But one of the things I uh, want to say is uh, uh, depending on the applications, critical, important combustion characteristic could be different. And depending on that, so one mechanism good for the frame speed and one mechanism good for the NOx emission. And depending on the applications, maybe at the moment we can suggest a different models. Okay, so you're given two criteria, but I'm still after a, uh, yeah. a winner, right? If you say one for the emissions, one for flame speed, where would we sit for both of those categories? Yeah, so the, uh, for, uh, even for that, uh, some of the mechanisms are good for the uh, NOx emission at the high temperature, NOx emission at the low temperature. And for example, the mild combustion conditions, uh, uh, rate of runs should be used or something like that. So depending on the applications, uh, look at the combustion characteristic predictions, and then we can assess that this could be good or something like that. Of course, futures perfect prediction is the dire, but it takes us okay. still long time. <laughs> so perhaps a diplomatic, a diplomatic <laughs> response. <Thanks. laughs> well, it's, yeah, comment? One more comment. One more comment, okay. Bye. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Uh, hello. First of all, uh, hello everyone. And thank you, Isashi, for your uh, presentation. Um, I have some comments uh, and uh, 
some question. First of all, uh, the, um, the key point that you raise about the presence of uh, reaction uh, uh, related to uh, N two H two N two H three and so on in the in the mechanisms, and uh, you stated that uh, Kornov was uh, uh, the one that has uh, the, that contained that consider uh, such uh, reactions, but now. You know, uh, uh, maybe there are also other uh, mechanisms, uh, maybe uh, Glarborg uh, or also the one from Naples that uh, uh, consider these uh, reactions. So I think that this uh, is a, a key point that you raised that this uh, uh, reaction has to be uh, uh, real relevant in the, in the uh, mechanism. This is the first uh, uh, comment. Uh, the second one is, uh, about uh, the the point uh, you discussed about the future work about uh, uh, the role of uh, water uh, of H2O as a, a third body in uh, in the uh, in the reaction. Uh, so th this is of course uh, uh, really relevant. Uh, but I would uh, ask you and underline uh, what about uh, other molecules that uh, has uh, uh, that have characteristics uh, like uh, uh, water. Um, for example, the, the ammonia itself uh, can have uh, a relevant role as a third body uh, because of uh, uh, its uh, um, polar and other characteristics very similar uh, with, uh, with water. So, uh, Maybe there is also uh, papers on that. What, so I would ask you a comment on that. Uh, and uh, also uh, the other point that uh, I would ask you, um, you know, uh, as experimentalists and uh, uh, generally the people raise uh, uh, the, the point of uh, a catalytic effect of a reactor. So you stated uh, that the passivation is uh, the right way uh, to approach this. Do you think that is uh, really good enough? Uh, or uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, okay, is enough to, to, to phase with the catalytic effect? Uh, the last one. Uh, you, along your presentation, you stated uh, before SIP program and after SIP program. What is uh, happening in Japan? after SIP program. This is just, uh, so thank you. <laughs> okay, so many questions. So uh, quickly, uh, yes, uh, the, this is an example of the water vapor. So uh, the, any third body uh, 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 agent could be possible, but the one thing is uh, H2O has a generally large uh, collision uh, uh, things and also the very important uh, product in the ammonia combustion. So that's why uh, the first things we would like to focus on the uh, water vapor. And the uh, catalytic effect is uh, uh, still very difficult in the uh, community, I think. And the uh, world chemical interaction is uh, uh, needs to be uh, further uh, investigated. Uh, right now, I have no idea for the best way, but passivation uh, method could be, could be one method, but needs to be improved. And uh, after the SIP project, we are also doing the several uh, large projects. Maybe the uh, many uh, Professor Okafo and Professor Hayaka are also do, uh, involving in the uh, uh, many kinds of the combustion. I, I'm also working on the uh, things. So uh, right now, I, I can't say the, uh, the uh, progress, but uh, in near future, uh, uh, result could be present, presented. That's all. Thank you very much. So the time time is always already already over. So the <laughs> so let's let's thank to Professor Nakamura. Thank you very much.